It's been a little while since my last video. I got caught up in summer in change. Around us, the landscape is starting to change too. The trees are taking on colour and the nights have a chill in the air. We've passed Mabon, the equinox where day and night are equal and we head into the dark half of the year. I think this could feel like it should be a time of sadness, of fear and unknowing, but it doesn't feel like that. The weeks and months ahead feel like time for opportunity. They're when I feel at my most creative. As an introvert, I love the drawn-in evenings, the quietness that takes hold of the landscape. For a couple of months, there's a blank canvas, a time of new beginnings, transformations, retreating to the earth and ultimately letting go of what doesn't serve us which is a phrase I really love. A couple of weeks ago, we spent a weekend at the Gower, which is an area of outstanding natural beauty on the southeast Welsh coastline. It's only about an hour away from home. This is the second time I visited, but it still feels like a completely different world. We spent the first evening watching the sunset over the peninsula, looking out over Worm's Head, and the next morning we hiked across to it, setting off at around 7am to catch the brief window of time where the tide is at its lowest and it's safe to cross. It was a really warm, humid day. Even on the coastline there was no breeze, and by the evening we were struck by heavy rain showers and heavy thunderstorms, the first rain in a couple of weeks. We stayed in a small cabin at the north of the peninsula, down country lanes and overlooking a brackish bay. The weather limited our plans slightly, but it was good to have a few days of nothingness. We read and edited photos, caught up in sleep, and went on short walks when the rain eased. Hello, so it's about 8.30 on a Sunday morning and I'm at Mum's. I'm going to come and cut the pumpkin that's in the greenhouse at the moment and get some of the delicata squash that are still in there. It's not the nicest day out, but the rain has kind of just started to ease off. I'm usually not up this early. <laughs> I'm usually still in bed until about nine o'clock on the weekend. But this morning I really wanted to get up and get out. So I got up at about six o'clock and now I'm here. I'm gonna go and see Emily in a bit as well, which I'm really looking forward to. And we're gonna do some work on field notes. But after this, I'm going to the plot and I'm going to harvest any of the Jackby Little squashes that are ready. And trying to think. There is another pumpkin there as well that I want to pick and maybe some corn. I would have picked some more beans but because of the weather they're not going to be as dry as I would like them to be so I'll wait for a sunnier day for that. But yeah I don't know what the pumpkin variety in the greenhouse is. I think it's a sugar pumpkin pie pumpkin sugar pie something like that and I got it from Baker Creek but it's the only one that has successfully grown, which is a shame uh, this year. I know I keep saying this, it's just not been the best year for any veg really. The flowers have done amazingly and they've really brought me so much happiness, which is kind of a good substitution for the lack of veg that has grown. But something I wanted to share with you guys is that I am currently looking at moving in about a year's time, closer to here, put some closer to my mum's, but hopefully getting a house with a garden, which means I could be giving up the allotment. It's really early days, it might not happen, I might not move for a couple more years, but fingers crossed and try not to put all my eggs in one basket, but I really hope it happens. I felt a little bit disconnected from the plot this year, I think just because of the poor season, but being in my own home now and not having access immediately to my growing space, I'm finding that quite difficult. I've always found it difficult and that's something that you kind of have to accept with an allotment, but because I think I have to drive to mine, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel the same. It needs a lot of work, which is never ending. And there are just certain elements with a public growing space that you're never going to be able to avoid. You know, not being able to control weeds as much, not being able to put any structures on there other than a very specific size shed. The maintenance and the rules that you have to keep to, I find quite difficult. And so I think because of that, it doesn't quite feel like mine. So that could be happening, but I will keep you guys up to date if it happens. The house that we are looking at has a garden that is about the size of the allotment. So that would be really exciting and would probably 
move the greenhouse there, which will be an interesting task, and build a lot of raised beds, or at least that's how I have it in my mind, and then the sort of outdoor dining space. Yeah, I try not to get too ahead of myself, but we'll see. Anyway, enough talking from me, let's go and cut this pumpkin. In the past couple of weeks, Emily and I have been working on a project which we've called Field Notes. You might have seen this on our Instagrams already, but Field Notes is a seasonal guide about living slowly and sustainably and in tune with the seasons. I've always been interested in photography and videography, but this was a real test of my graphic design skills and also a challenge for my writing skills too. I work in communications, so part of my job is about writing in a way that should hold clear and valuable meaning, and I write fiction as a hobby. But this kind of writing is something completely new to me. There's an element of journalism in it, something autobiographical too, although Field Notes isn't really meant to be about us. We've created something that's designed for coffee tables and train rides, something that's meant to be beautiful to leaf through, but also offers some tokens of wisdom. It feels really good to be creating with a friend, 
It's a space where you've got your own skills, your own vision, and you have to find compromise, but you can really make something beautiful out of love. By the time I'm editing this video, I've ordered our first test copy before we make the final order. We're aiming to sell about 30 copies. I'm not sure if that's too ambitious, but we'll find out. I've learned a lot about seasonal living and writing this book. I never knew about the Wheel of the Year, the Eight Sabbaths, the Pagan Practices, how we too might have once been linked with the seasons. I've also been walking a lot recently, about six miles a day, and I've been using that time to listen to podcasts and audiobooks. At the moment, I'm listening to The Wheel of the Year by Pauline Campanelli, and I've just finished Enchantment by Catherine May. If you have any book recommendations on living naturally, seasonally, or pagan practices, please let me know. During my walks, I pass through this public orchard in my local village. It's by a main road, but I don't think many people know it's there or that they're allowed in. That's a note on the laws of trespass for another time. But for field notes, I wanted to capture photos of apple trees, which I think is quintessentially autumnal for so many of us at this time of the year. The apples in these orchards are some of the sweetest I've ever tasted, and I like that I can pick one from the trees on my walk each day. I've learnt to only take the ones that give themselves to me. If it doesn't come easily from the vine, it's not ready or it's probably not meant for us. This was one of my favourite scenes to document for field notes. The symbolism of the autumn harvest. We sat in Emily's garden beneath her towering dahlias and ate pumpkin shaped bread rolls with fresh coleslaw and blackberry muffins. The days are still warm enough to sit outside, which I feel a bit sad about. I can't remember if it always used to be this mild at the beginning of October, or if I'm feeling nostalgic for something that wasn't even real. I'm so excited to feel the first copy in my hands and see something that has only existed in my screen come to life. I'm very excited for you to be able to experience that too if you're interested. Already I'm thinking ahead to winter, the kind of imagery I'd like to include, the words and the stories that we can tell. I found that gardening align me with the seasons more than I could imagine. It's interesting when we remark on the unseasonably dry springs or damp summers and people generally haven't noticed. Well, they're excited for hot weather when our climate should be cooling and embracing the retreat. Part of Field Notes is, to me, bringing that sense of awareness back to people, letting them get a sense for what should exist, the natural patterns of life, and the behaviours of our own. 
I don't know where field notes will go or take us, but I can't wait to find out.